The last section is dedicated to Bayesian epistemology. But I'm not going to do good justice to the Bayesian epistemologists. I'm not going to use their, uh, describe their epistemology because it's very dry, obtuse, technical. And you, you notice that in, in, in my previous lectures, I, I talked about Popper, Kuhn, very briefly when it philosophers of science dedicate um, a lot of time to these philosophers. I just took into account things that are important, interesting, and that help the scientists to do good science. So I'm going to follow the same approach here, but also I'm going to use this section to provide a useful solution to the problems we've seen in, in these uh, sections of scientific knowledge. So, this is Bayes' theorem. And I'm just going to say this. What it tries to do the Bayes' theorem is to obtain what is called the posterior distribution, which in this case has the form of the probability of hypothesis given data. And that is obtained by the product of the likelihood and the prior distribution. The likelihood is the probability of the data that we observed given that the hypothesis we are considering is true. And the prior distribution is the probability we, that we give to a hypothesis to be true before collecting data. Probability of the data is what we call marginal likelihood and it's the probability of observing the data regardless whether the hypothesis is true or false. But I'm not going to discuss Bayes' theorem. I'm going to um, tell you that the Bayes' theorem is used to um, capture the essence of science, which is the accumulation of knowledge, the gradual accumulation of knowledge. So, we start with P hypothesis, the probability of the hypothesis. That's what we believe about how the possibility of the hypothesis before collecting data. This is our previous knowledge. Then we make a prediction, a prediction based on the hypothesis. We observe data, new information, and based on that we learn. And now we change our hypothesis, we change the probability of the hypothesis based on that, the new information. So that's the probability of the hypothesis given the data we just observed. Now, that's new knowledge, but that um, it's the starting point of another cycle of exploration. So our new probability of the hypothesis becomes the prior knowledge. We are going to make a new prediction, we are going to observe new data, and we are going to adjust again our probability of the hypothesis given the new data. And we do that again and again and again and again. And we gain knowledge and that will give us more or less credence in the hypothesis we have. Now, there are two ways of doing that. So again, we've got the Bayes theorem, but um, in the, 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 the approach uh, that is called estimation, Bayesian estimation, the hypo hypotheses are about parameter values. So parameter values is, for example, the mean of a population, the mean in some variable, let's say mean intelligence in one population. So we can start with a prior, believe about that, what's um, 
the mean of the population, the mean intelligence of the population. Then we observe data and we use the Bayes theorem to adjust our or update our probability, our credence on the on the probability of each parameter value. So let's say we start with uh, our estimation is that the most probable probable value is 115 and it's normally distributed so values closer uh, to 115 a bit higher and a bit lower are still quite possible but the further we away we go uh, from 115 the less likely those values now we observe new data we have obtain a sample and the mean of the new sample is let's say 100 now we have to adjust our belief our credence we give to uh, parameter values so it's somewhere between 115 and 110 our most probable value now we need to adjust our our probability of the uh, parameter values based on the new data now that's estimation but another approach is model comparison in that case um, instead of obtaining a posterior distribution like we obtained in, in parameter estimation we compare the probability of the data given the hypothesis which is the likelihood of two different hypotheses and remember um, in uh, abduction or in that inference to the best explanation and we had a group of hypotheses and we need to determine um, which hypothesis best explains the data so we can combine these two approaches the idea of having a set of hypotheses rather than just one hypothesis and uh, deciding which one best explains uh, the data the difference uh, in uh, with uh, abduction here is that in we have a numerical an objective method to um, to determine which hypothesis is better so to uh, conclude Deductive inference is the most is the purest of the inferences because it guarantees certain knowledge. We need to abandon that. We cannot use that um, in order to uh, obtain knowledge. So we need to do induction, but induction doesn't guarantee uh, certain knowledge we can combine these two ideas by pro generating hypotheses and collecting data based on to test this hypothesis not just mere observation of of uh, data and the Bayesian approach gives us a method a numerical method to give credence to different hypotheses based on the data and to accumulate uh, knowledge and change those credences based on new knowledge.